Hey guys, uh, currently in the uh, drawing studio today, uh, just chipping away at a couple of anatomy diagrams. Um, I'll show you this one that I whipped up a couple of weeks ago. I did post it on my Instagram account, but uh, it was that guy there. And I'm not sure if the camera is focused on that. Hopefully it is, but anyway. And then um, I'm just kind of working on the side view. So I'll just quickly move this camera so you can kind of see what I'm up to. So these are the diagrams here. And uh, yeah, just kind of like chipping away at the side view, just seeing where everything goes. So yeah, basically using geometry to draw human anatomy, which is a very interesting way of approaching it. I'm actually reading a book called Strutura Uomo, which is teaching me how to do this. Hopefully that's the pronunciation. I think I probably butchered that, but it's an Italian anatomy book and it's very, very good. It has really beautiful diagrams of the human body. It like breaks down into like all these geometric shapes and like reconstructs it. it it's a really fantastic anatomy book. Um, it, it's not in English. There's no English translation. So if you can speak Italian, then you're all set. But if you're like me and you don't speak Italian, then, well, you know, you just have to learn the hard way. But it's a great book, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm making this video, though, to basically talk about perspective drawing and how it is the single most important subject for artists to study. Uh, simply put, if you can draw in perspective, you can basically draw anything, right? Perspective is all about drawing three-dimensional worlds. It's about drawing figures three-dimensionally. And that's the thing, you can apply it to everything. You can apply it to humans, animals, buildings, architecture, vehicles. Uh, perspective drawing is, is the fundamental skill that every artist needs to know. Um, but I thought it would be an interesting video to kind of show you the journey that I went through as I was learning how to draw in perspective, because I get a lot of people asking me, you know, how is it that I can draw so many things? How is it that I can draw human anatomy, animal anatomy, uh, architecture, whatever? Um, there's, there's quite a few subjects that I can cover uh, in my drawings. And it basically just comes down to perspective drawing. You know, it's just having a very well-developed sense of three-dimensional space and when you do have that sense of three-dimensional space sky's the limit you know you can do you can draw whatever you want basically within reason you know you still have to study these other things but perspective drawing is is definitely key so I thought I would go ahead and show you how I went from a hyper realist you know which is somebody who is an artist who copies from photographs to make them look photorealistic so I used to be a hyper-realist and then I'm kind of documenting this journey as I drop more and more into perspective drawing. So that's what this video is going to be about. But yeah, hyper-realism is, uh, you know, I used to do it. I used to draw from photographs all of the time. And I remember at the time thinking I was like really impressed with myself that I could do these, you know, really realistic renderings of people, portraits, whatever. Uh, but then as time went on, I started to realize that I wasn't quite as skilled as I thought I was. Um, because hyperrealism, uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for saying this, but hyperrealism is just not that skillful. Okay. You're, all you're doing is you're copying from a photograph. So the work is basically already done. Okay, you don't have to imagine anything. You don't have to compose the image. You know, there's a lot of technical things with perspective drawing that you don't need to do when you're just copying straight up from a photograph. And that's what you're doing. You're just a glorified human photocopier. And that's what I was. And, you know, I think a lot of people are content with that. Like, I'm not trying to put anybody down who does that. But for me personally, it, it wasn't enough. You know, it, it wasn't enough. I really wanted to be able to draw from imagination and uh, I just couldn't do it because I my brain was so used to copying flat images in the form of photographs. And, you know, I 
Yeah, I remember seeing artworks from like, you know, Adrian Smith, who's like, you know, I call him the Warhammer guy. He does like a lot of artworks for Warhammer. Um, in fact, quite a lot of the Warhammer artists are great. And, you know, they just usually draw traditionally and they draw from imagination and it just comes from their heads. And yet it looks so, it's very stylized, but it also looks believable. And, you know, I just could not get how they could do that, you know. Here, I, I could copy from a photograph, but then you look at what these concept artists are doing for like these, you know, Warhammer Studios or Game Studios or whatever, and you think, wow, you know, you look at their stuff and how they do it from the mind, and you just think, they are really good. Like, they're just on a whole other level. Um, and perspective drawing has really helped me to kind of get a lot closer to that level. So, in this video, uh, yeah, I want to show you some of the hyper-realistic drawings that I used to do. And uh, then after that, I'll show you some of the perspective drawings that I did, some of the exercises that I did. And then kind of show you the drawings that I'm doing right now as a result of all of that learning. So I, I, um, I know this intro has dragged on for quite a while, so I'm going to leave it here. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. And um, yeah, hopefully it gives you a little, little bit more of an insight into my process. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is a drawing that I did uh, probably back in 2017, 2018, uh, back when I was into hyperrealism. And this is basically what I would do. I would look at a photograph um, of an image that I liked and I would just draw it. And <laughs> that's about it. That's just as far as it went. And so obviously this is a drawing of Gwen Stefani uh, during one of her concerts. Uh, I think she might have still been in with No Doubt at this time. I don't know, but it's quite an old photo. Uh, but yeah, it you know, it's it's very highly rendered. You know, you can see that I've got some of like that blur effect happening in the background. So, you know, I, I really did copy this photo pixel for pixel, basically. Um, and, you know, from a distance, it looks fine. But the drawing kind of falls into the uncanny valley a little bit, uh, especially in some areas. You'll notice... Uh, in a second, actually, uh, her left hand is just kind of drawn really weirdly. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what was happening, but uh, the, the left hand just wasn't really drawn that well. And <laughs> there it is right there. Uh, it just looks like the fingers are too small or the, the thumb looks kind of like a stump. I'm not sure. It just didn't look right. But, you know, it doesn't look right because there's a reason for that. And that's because I did not know how to draw anatomy. I didn't know anything about human anatomy. Uh, again, this is an example of what I'm talking about. I'm good at copying what I see when I was doing this sort of drawing, but I didn't really understand what it was that I was seeing. And in a second here, oh, here it is right now, actually. You can see, I, you know, I used, to, I used to use grids. You know, I used to use a grid to draw photos because I did not understand the proportions of the human figure. I didn't understand the ideal proportions or anything like that. So a lot of my time in a lot of these drawings, uh, I would go ahead and just use a grid because it would just make the process so much easier. Um, and again, I, I would heavily recommend not using grids at all. It's very detrimental to your art practice. If you want to get good at drawing people, you have to know the proportions and you have to know at least a surface level of human anatomy. Um, so this is a portrait of Emily Blunt as well. Same deal, uh, just copied it from a photo. And I think this is from the film Sicario. It's like a scene of her like sort of washing blood of herself in the shower. So, And I thought that was a cool image. Uh, but again, this is what I used to do. I could not imagine anything all I could do was copy um and you know again the drawings might look cool from the surface but uh, there we go with the grids again <laughs> back with the grids um but yeah but you know that drawing of Emily Blunt was pretty cool you know it was a cool image and I think that one looks a lot better than the Gwen Stefani one 
but yeah, and whoa, jump scare. Um, <laughs> uh, this was act. This was actually pretty cool. So this was drawn at around the same time. So this is uh, Patrick Bateman, American Psycho, um, but with a whole bunch of insects crawling all over his face, and you know his eye holes are like really just. Yeah, what a disturbing image. Uh, I don't really know what was going through my head at the time. So th this one was a little bit more creative, and I think it was done at around the same time. But again, you know, it, it, it's the same trouble. It, it's like I can draw the silhouette, I can see the photo, and I can copy it. But there's a few things wrong with that portrait, especially the nose. I think the nose is just a dead giveaway. It The nose is just not drawn very well. Um, it doesn't look three-dimensional at all. And again, that's because I didn't know the anatomy of what I was drawing. And this is the thing, you know, like if you, if you don't understand the anatomy or the structure of what it is that you're drawing, then you can't really ever hope to do a good job of it. And it doesn't matter how much you render it. If the proportions are wrong and the anatomy is wrong, then... It's just wrong, you know, and it's not going to get any better by rendering it. And you notice that as well in a lot of uh, hyper-realist artworks, you know, like the guys who can draw photo realistically, you know, they obsess over the tones and the rendering and the shading. And, you know, they draw like the pores of the skin and all this ridiculous stuff, but it doesn't really make the drawing any better, especially when you zoom in on some of their drawings and you realize the proportions are wrong or the hands are not drawn correctly or, or the face looks a bit off because, you know, they've not studied the anatomy of it. Uh, it it's quite funny that they go through all of this effort to uh, basically draw something that's kind of doomed to failure. And uh, this drawing that you're looking at right now, this was kind of me starting to get into like academic drawing i guess uh so these are the bark plates um which a lot of you might be familiar with i'm dead set against bark plates by the way i think they're detrimental to an artist's practice i i would have to do a whole video of that alone to be honest because um that's going to be a pretty controversial topic but uh i don't like bark plates this was the only one i ever did and I, I just found that it was actually detrimental to my art practice because it wasn't really teaching me how to think and draw constructively. Uh, again, it's, it's the same problem with the hyperrealist. You're just copying shapes without really understanding what those shapes are about. Now, this drawing is uh, a perspective drawing uh, of just a bunch of cubes, but this was actually really cool because I learned a lot about rendering and I learned a lot about drawing in three-dimensional space. And, you know, how to draw cast shadows, like, you know, because all of this was done from imagination, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, really cool exercise in drawing and rendering cast shadows and, you know, what those values would look like on different surfaces, you know, like dark versus light surfaces. And uh, this this was a cool drawing actually so this is when i started to draw more constructively with with human anatomy i kind of took what little i learned about perspective and and tried to apply it to drawing sculptures and facial features and by doing that i actually learned a lot more um because i was reading anatomy books at the time but some of them just weren't very good uh but drawing the fragments of sculptures like this really helps me to understand what that structure was. Um, so that really helps when drawing it from more complex angles. Um, and you'll see that in the, uh, in the next photo, actually, where I do a lot of construction drawings of the nose, uh, which should be coming up right now, I think. There it is. Um, so you can see that, you know, if you go back in the video and look how what I did with that Christian Bale portrait, and now you compare it to the construction of the nose here, you can see that I'm finally understanding the forms. I'm understanding those plane changes, those curved shapes there, uh, you know, what bit of anatomy goes where and how it's shaped and how you can draw it in perspective. So 
Um, and a lot of those sketches were, again, they, I think initially they were drawn from a reference, but typically I, I drew from imagination as well because it's just a really good, a good exercise to draw from the mind. I really like this image. So it, I, I stuck with perspective drawing for quite a long time. There was a period where I was drawing nothing but cubes, boxes, hexagonal prisms, uh, all kinds of shapes, just basic, basic shapes. And it, I think it was probably the best thing I ever did in my artistic practice because I was learning a lot. I was learning like how to rotate shapes, how to stack shapes one on top of the other and how to cast shadows in basically these imaginary environments. And then I also learned how to render them realistically, all all from imagination. And again, it, it was just a really, really, really great way of learning. It was a lot of fun too. Um, I know the drawings don't look fantastic. You know, they're, they're just a bunch of basic shapes. But uh, believe me when I tell you that they are a lot of fun to draw. And so I actually stuck with it for quite a while and I'm glad that I did because I just learned so much, especially rendering, you know, like how light and shadow actually works. It, it was just so much fun and I still do them. You know, I still do these exercises a lot because the more I do them, I, I just have a much better understanding of three-dimensional space. Now, this drawing that you're looking at right now, this was a really uh, interesting one. This uh, is basically an exercise where you wedge shapes into each other and you have to actually try to work out exactly what those intersections are and what they look like. I've got these drawing exercises in my drawing course and 100% they are the best way to learn how to draw in perspective. They are because of how complex they are you know and, and you're drawing it from your mind but they're kind of like a technical drawing uh it, it, it ha you have to develop a structure that makes sense and you're doing that with the basic geometric shapes and you learn so much about intersections and wedging and things like that i've got a lot of those exercises in my drawing course so if you're learning if you're interested in learning that i i would highly recommend i think that was the best thing i ever did for my art practice um, and that's why I love to teach it and you can see here we're coming back to the eye and after I did those perspective exercises I drew this and it's basically based on the eye of David as you can tell uh, but the kicker is I didn't use any photo reference for these perspective drawings so those schematics that you can see in the top left hand corner of the front view and the side view that was my only reference and then i would just build these perspective views from that so this is probably where i found that i was really improving in perspective drawing and really just had a really good sense of, of human anatomy at this point you know like it was just really rewarding seeing how uh those forms could turn and twist and even being able to draw complex things like anatomy, it was just really rewarding being able to do that uh, from my mind, which is what I've always wanted to do. So this drawing that you're looking at here, this was a linear drawing that I did for a Doric column. And it was with this drawing that I really felt for the first time that I just kind of nailed it. Like I, I just understood perspective drawing on such a deeper level uh, again i did not look at any photos for this one this was all just constructed from my mind uh everything was plotted correctly and accounted for and i love this stage of the drawing by the way you know i love seeing all the construction lines and all the perspective lines and you can see how it casted the shadows onto the forms uh, but yeah this was the first drawing where i felt like i really got to grips with perspective and uh, here's the rendered drawing, which, uh, again, I just love how that turned out. Like, I, I don't really think I could do a better job even if I tried. Uh, not to say that it's perfect. There's still a lot wrong with it, I guess. But, you know, I, I was really happy with how it turned out. And I, yeah, I love how you can see all the construction lines, even in the finished drawing. You can see 
the journey that it took to get to that result. And I do that in pretty much all of my drawings now. Um, I'm a huge advocate for leaving all the line work in the drawing because it just makes it look better. It's, it's a lot more fun to, to look at. But yeah, being able to construct these forms from the mind was uh, just a revelation for me, honestly. And I think when I did that drawing, I began work on my drawing course, which I released sometime last year because I felt like I really knew how to draw in perspective really well. And it was just something that I wanted to show other people, you know, I wanted to show my methods and my processes. This is this is a really cool drawing, actually. I like how this was just a bit more fun, you know, playing around with perspectives, carving out the basic shapes and coming up with these sort of, I guess, abstract forms. Um, again, we actually do this in the drawing course. Uh, I love these kinds of drawings, uh, especially if you're learning how to draw in perspective. They're just a lot of fun. It makes learning a lot more fun and... They're quite tricky. They're very, you know, they're not as easy as they look. They're, they're very tricky. They're quite technical. Uh, but again, it just makes you a much better draftsman. So I included quite a lot of these kinds of exercises throughout my drawing course. Um, and this drawing of the, the column, th this is actually in the drawing course, okay? So I draw this from start to finish. You basically witnessed the whole process. I think it took about uh, maybe four hours. Um, there, there's quite a few videos on it. So I basically recorded the process and just broke it up into smaller videos. And then that way it was a bit more digestible. But yeah, this this drawing is in the course. You'll, you'll actually see it if any of you are taking that course right now. This is actually one of the final lessons and it, it's just such a valuable lesson because it shows you exactly how I approach drawing something like this completely from imagination getting the perspective in there getting the construction in there um yeah it, you're basically just witnessing my whole drawing process right there I'm going to leave a link in the description to my course for any of you guys who do want to check it out um I, I think Learning how to draw in perspective, whether it's from books or from online courses or whatever, it's just really valuable. And, you know, it, it's not something that you really want to sleep on. Um, you know, again, perspective is just, well, you can, you can kind of see it throughout this video. Like when you, when you draw in perspective, you can just draw a lot of things and it just opens up a whole new world to you. So having someone teach you that I think is really valuable and you know I've read a lot of books on perspective uh, some were better than others um, but I just had to I remember I took lessons from this Russian guy who was like he worked in a architectural academy in Moscow and he taught me some of his techniques and he did show me a thing or two which was really good you know I'm you know, without him, I don't think I'd probably be drawing half of these things that I'm drawing today. Uh, but he did kind of throw me in the deep end a little bit. There was a lot that I didn't understand about perspective. And he taught me some things. Uh, he taught me a lot of valuable things. But I also had to kind of come up with some of my own methods as well. Because some things were unfortunately just kind of lost in translation. So that was a bit unfortunate. Um, so yeah, I, I just came up with a few of my own methods just to kind of fill in the gaps of information there. And yeah, that also prompted me to develop my own course. Um, yeah, this this was a really tricky drawing, by the way. That was That was a nightmare, just getting the spirals to work in perspective. And yeah, that, that drawing was a mission, but you know, I could draw it, so may as well. Uh, once I got the hang of drawing in perspective, I actually went into looking at like ink washes. So like working with ink and doing like these architectural ink washes, kind of like what the old masters used to do, like the old school architects of the 19th century in the uh, French academies. 
they would use ink and basically what they would do is they would dilute the ink with water and then apply it in washes and that was quite a nightmare to learn i did not learn that from an online course i read a few books on the topic um i will will link those in the description as well if you want to check them out they're quite technical they're very um not beginner friendly i will tell you that it took me quite a long time to actually work through those books and get the technique down pat but yeah but here's another ink wash of mine that i finished not too long ago and i'm quite happy with how this turned out this one could have gone either way actually uh it was um, giving me a lot of trouble <laughs> at one point. But, you know, we got it done. Especially, you know, it, it's cool. Like, as you said, when the camera zooms out, you'll see the whole thing. But it's cool just like watching all the, looking at all the details and stuff like that. And the thing about these kinds of drawings is they they really are a test of skill. They, because again, I'm not, I'm not drawing from a photo here. This is all... Like everything you see, the everything from the shapes to the shadows and where the shadows are being cast, it's all plotted and calculated, okay? So this is like kind of like an old school rendering. It's like an, it's like an old, old school engineering drawing. And I love doing these, but they're very, very time consuming. And uh, you'll see in a minute some of the line work that went into drawing this this particular artwork um like right there you know you can see how i'm plotting all the cast shadows if you look very carefully you can see there's the plan view which i overlaid on top of the actual column itself um i did that in pencil and then i just kind of erased it but that's what it takes to draw something like that and you know again if i didn't study perspective and architectural drawing on a deeper level i never would have been able to draw something like this. You know, if you told me five years ago that I was going to be doing architectural renderings like this, I just would not have believed you because, again, I just never ever thought that my skill set was there. And that's kind of another point that I want to make in this video is that, you know, if you are feeling stuck or if you feel like you're not learning or if you're not drawing the things that you don't want to draw it it's not too late you you just need to readjust and kind of reassess where it is that you want to go and what kind of techniques you want to learn it, it it's never too late to learn there's a whole wealth of information out there uh, i'm a huge advocate for online learning for that reason you know again i didn't go to an art academy i just never had the money to do it um i just never had that opportunity um but in some ways i'm actually quite glad that i didn't because if i had i would have been restricted to a certain curriculum which probably wouldn't have been any kind of benefit for me i mean you know like this drawing that you're looking at right now it it it, they don't really teach this kind of drawing anymore in any art academies i think there's one in new york that they teach it but you, you know again um to do that i'd have to fly to new york and i'm not going to do that <laughs> so um online learning you know i'm a huge advocate for it and and perspective drawing i'm a huge advocate for that because now i'm drawing things that i didn't think i could do this, this is a uh, character design that i did for achilles and again no photo reference all of it was just from the mind i the the only thing i probably did look at was just a few different kind of greek helmets the helmet that i designed here was my own creation but i did want to have a look at a few greek helmets just to kind of um get a bit of inspiration or just to kind of look at what a greek helmet kind of looks like more or less um but yeah these these heads that you're looking at were just this one's for alexander the great and yeah, these were just character designs that I came up from my mind. And, you know, I again, I didn't think I could ever do this. Um, so a few years ago, I was copying from photographs and I really struggled to draw from imagination. Fast forward after I've done all my perspective drawing, uh, learning, um, 
now I'm doing character designs and architectural drawings and all sorts of other stuff. And it's just been a really rewarding experience for me. Uh, this is a drawing uh, based on Antonio Canova's sculpture, which is Hercules throwing some guy. I can't remember his name. Um, I love the red chalk in that. Red chalk drawings are just beautiful. And uh, they just add life, quite a lot of life to the drawing. And this is the line work that I did for... Uh, portrait of Aphrodite. Th this is already on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn how I do this, I will link this video in the description as well. Uh, but that was a fun little exercise. And, you know, when I was doing these red chalk drawings and these portrait drawings, I, I kind of came to the realization that I did not want to copy from photographs anymore. And I did not want it to look like a photograph either. Uh, I think a drawing should look like a drawing and not like a photograph because drawings have a beauty of their own. And I think fine art, you know, oil paintings, graphite drawings, red chalk drawings, they, they just have a life or, or no, sorry. They, they have a beauty that photography will never match. Um, at least in my eyes, you know, that's just my opinion, but you know, when you see something that's just been handcrafted, I don't think photography can really compare. Um, this was like a design for a Greek temple that I did. Not not based on any a temple in particular. It's just, again, just from my mind. Just something that I thought would look cool. Um, and I learned how to do that because of this. So all these sacred geometry patterns that you're looking at. Um, you, you, when you study classical architecture, you do realize that uh, there's a lot of sacred geometry within the designs. And so I kind of used that in that Greek temple that I was drawing. And this is Socrates. So this guy, uh, he he gave me a lot of trouble. I spent a long time on him. And there was a point where I didn't think I could do it. But I loved how the finished result turned out and I love how you can see all the pencil hatching strokes and all the rendering um I, I just loved how he how this guy really turned out and he was basically a culmination of everything that I learned you know he was a culmination of all the perspective drawing techniques and all of the face anatomy that I learned and you can see it you know if you go back earlier in the video and compare this drawing to those portraits that I was doing you'll notice that everything in this drawing looks way better. Uh, it looks like a drawing, which again, I think is a good thing. But more importantly, the anatomy is actually drawn correctly, especially the nose and the shapes of the eyes. You know, it's like, I finally understand those forms behind the face. And uh, as a result, it, it just makes him look really three-dimensional, you know, and, and it really just you know, I, I love how this drawing turned out. You know, I, it just has so much, so much more life than any of the drawings that I did years ago. And I just love looking at him. I, I, uh, I actually have him hanging above my drawing desk and I just like to look at him sometimes because he, he just kind of reminds me of how far I've come in my own drawing practice and, and also how much further I still need to go.